So hello, I hope everything's working out technically. I'll need to double check right here, but I think that I'm live right now. So hello, and welcome to my very first YouTube live stream. I'm actually quite excited about that. I really and truly am. Um, and if things go wrong, please bear with me as I'm trying to figure this thing out. Thank you to all who are joining live to this session and of course to all who will be watching the replay of the video. Today we have a very, very exciting topic which is how to become a professional creative. We will talk about that in depth and I will share with you my experience as everything I found out in research and also what I found out with my own experiences talking to my amazing podcast guests who all are creative professionals and uh, yeah. I think we will just dive right in into the topic. Afterwards, I will answer your questions if you have any and also will share with you something about my newest book and video course, which is The Business Minded Creative. And this is why I'm actually doing this video because it's kind of based off this course and this book and the topic that's really, really and truly on my soul. So I hope you're as excited as I am to dive in. Let's do this. First of all, who is a creative professional? This is like the main question or a professional creative maybe. No matter how, how the way you, you say it, no matter which way you say it around. It's just who, how do you define a, profet, a creative professional? And I would say the definition is a person who can both balance creativity and business. A person who is, yes, paid for their creativity, for their art, for their products, sure, but also a person who can balance creativity and business, who can, who understands that both are an end of the same stick and really and truly important as a creative. And if you want to be a professional creative, you can, you don't have to wait for permission, you then don't have to wait until people allow you or give you that title or allow you to call yourself that. You just have to become a creative, professional creative entrepreneur, a creative businesswoman or man. Um, and yeah, this is what this course is all about. Please bear with me as I look at my notes as well because it's quite a huge topic and I have to look, uh, I, I have to watch out that I don't forget anything. So, um, yeah, ah, and a creative professional is somebody, just remembered, uh, who is, who has a lifestyle around their creativity. So you don't have to w win awards or have, like I said, a title. You're a creative professional if you live that in your daily life. If you have the routines of a businessman or woman and a creative person, an artist, and have, if you have established these routines in your life, then you can call yourself a creative professional because, or a professional creative, <laughs> because you're walking towards that every single day. It's a lifestyle. It's steps that you take daily to balance both business and creativity and make money with doing what you love and sharing your creations with the world. So before I talk about the secret that lies behind being a truly creative professional or professional creative, um, I really want to talk about burnout. Because, um, yeah, I've been there <laughs> a lot of times and I feel like many creatives, because we're not doing this as a main job, we feel like um, we have to do it all at once. We try to balance our day jobs, our families, everything else and being creative and we often hit the wall when it comes to burnout. And I feel like this is why, for example, many writers have writer's block. It's kind of a form of burnout, actually, where you just don't have this creative juice flowing. And burnout really hits you. And I've been there like a couple of times where I realized, okay, I'm at the edge, at least at the edge of creative burnout. And before we ju jump into that, because being a professional creative, creative professional um, means also avoiding burnout. This is like the surefire, for surefire path to avoiding burnout. And this is why it's so important to hit that, to understand that and to 
uh, yeah, implement, implement that in your own life. So the two stages of creative burnout are, yes, balancing creativity and the day job. And I know that many have been doing this for years on end. And honestly, I don't know how you do that. I really don't because I've been in a day job for three or four months like an actual day job where I work from nine to five or was even more. I've been um, heading the video department of a creative agency and it just killed me. It absolutely killed me. Probably because I also had a, um, a commute of two hours, two hours there, two hours back. <laughs> it was just, I feel like I was just purely existing, really. I was getting up in the morning, running towards to my train, sitting in the train for two hours, trying to, in the morning I was mostly sleeping, in the afternoons trying to do something, read a book or learn something or be creative in some way that is really important to me because doing this, these jobs and the agency, yes, it was also creative in a way, but it was nothing that really brought me to life, nothing that really mattered to me. Uh, yeah, so I, it just really killed me. So guys, I don't know how you do that. But if you're trying to balance your creativity, like writing a book and having a day job, you're you're the hero for me. And I know that you're probably at the edge of burnout because it's so damn difficult to put time into your creativity. For example, to get up early or to after work to sit down and start continuing writing your book or doing your creative projects. Um, and I know that, for example, when I talked to you, Howie, on my interview, uh, on my podcast interview, he said that he was, uh, he, this was just crazy. He got up two hours early, I think, wrote for two hours and went to work. And then in his lunch break for an hour of 30 minutes, he was writing. And then he was also getting like one hour at the, in the evening of writing time. And he said this was like, it was really like hell, I think. So we have to really watch out that our day job like having to balance our day job and our creativity doesn't burn us out. Um, so the, the question is, do you want to quit your day job? Do you want to invest everything into creativity? Because if you want to become a professional creative, you have to think about reducing your time at your day job and putting in this time into your creativity. And it's risky it's really risky, but if you start thinking along the lines of business and creativity, you can you can make money with creativity. It's possible, it's realistic, there are tons of people who are doing it, and people you don't know because they're so niche, actually. Um, and yeah, so what are your misconceptions about that? What's holding you back? Do you think that being creative, being an artist, is somebody who's really starving and it can't make you any money. Because if you tr try for years and years and years and then to balance creativity and your day job, you will likely burn out. And the second stage is actually um, dreading the bank statement. And this was, this was like my second, um, my second stage of where I got. So I quit my day job because I was simply existing. I was actually falling into depression. I said to myself, okay, I'll just quit. And I could do that because I didn't have a family to support. I was, just, I just finished school and I was still living at home. And I just said, okay, as long as I can, as long as I don't, as nothing depends on it, I will quit the stage job and try to become a freelancer. Um, yeah, and I did that. <laughs> and from then on, it was like, I was just dreading to look at my bank account. I was avoiding it, which is not a good thing because you have to be realistic about your money. You have to know what's going on there. But I was like, oh, I can't look at there again. And uh, seeing my debt, seeing the money that I lost, uh, it was going on for years. And actually, while I did that, we got married and I got it and I had a child and I was still afraid of my, of my banking account, seriously, for like three or four years. And... Uh, I remember those words. I talk about that in my book. Um, I remember those words. Oh, I just see. I just saw that my 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 format is kind of off. I just don't know how to fix that. Sorry about that, guys. Ay, ay, ay. So wait. If I 
let me see if I can try and fix that. Let's see. Someone should have told me that my format's so off. It's not working in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you can see that. Yeah, it's really difficult to get that if I don't know how to do this. I said to you, I warned you, bear with me as I do this. Because I have no idea how to work out this program. Mm hmm. I can do this right now. Okay, see, I think this should work. Uh, I hope I'll continue with that. So, where was I? Um, yeah, talking about the bank account and how I said, I remember how I called my husband. I was like, okay, I'm just tired of living this way. I don't want to do that. And I tell the story in my newest book. Um, yeah, and I was really, really tired. Uh, and I was at the age of burnout. And I was saying like, okay, I just give up. I'm going to get another day job. And this is like the second point where we as creatives can really burn out when we don't see the money coming in. Maybe it's not the money. Maybe it's just the numbers. Maybe it's just you're, you've written a book or you have a YouTube channel or whatever. And there's like five, only five people listening to you. And I, I know the feeling because my YouTube channel is actually not that big. <laughs> but I'm glad that my email list is bigger and I'm just starting out with YouTube. But I still feel this pressure like, okay, why isn't it growing? Why is nothing happening? But I'm glad because I have figured out the system and I saw it work and I just work on it on my YouTube channel as well as on my email list and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so yeah, these are the two stages of burnout. Let me see if I haven't forgotten anything. Ah, yeah, I wanted to tell you a story about a friend of mine. She was, I actually had her, one of my first people that I interviewed on the Story I Just podcast. And she sent out an email and said that she's quitting. She was a self-publisher writing books and she was so angry with the industry, with the people. And I really got her at that point, you know. And I felt her pain as she wrote this. And I knew that she did. She, in a kind of way, she burned out and she said, okay, I'm throwing the towel. I can't do this anymore. And this is why it's so important. And I was like, you, you know, you always have this, uh, these words thrown at you saying, um, just keep producing great content. Just keep doing the things you're doing. Just keep doing and doing and doing them. And eventually you will get there. But this is just not true. You can't keep producing great content because, uh, I don't know, I feel like it won't help you really. It won't do anything for you um, because you can keep producing great content, but the numbers won't magically appear by just doing that. And I was wondering, okay, if, is this really the formula or is there maybe another secret I don't know? And yes, <laughs> there actually is a secret that I don't didn't know back then. And I figured it out, I think maybe a year ago or something, and it actually it doubled my output because um, it has to do with creativity on the one hand. So the way how I approach my creativity really doubled my output and it also doubled my income. Not instantly, but as I started to work on that, it really did. It had its effect. So this is what I'm going to talk to you about. This secret that I found out and where I went on this journey of talking to people and figuring out a system that works. So... Um, yeah, first I wanted to talk about one misconception, which is, is there really such a thing as a professional creative? Well, maybe you have to be Joanna, uh, Joanna, <laughs> JK Rowling or Stephen King or the Da Vinci of this world and win the lottery and get lucky because I feel like when you talk to many professionals, they're like, I don't know, I feel like I just got lucky. It was a great portion of luck. But they don't understand that, yes, okay, maybe when we're talking about the big names like Stephen King or J.K. Rowling, but there are so many people who are niche creatives, like let's say 
Joanna Pan or Mark Dawson. Those are the ones I know because they're in my industry, but I'm sure there are tons more in your industry and the way you are, the, the place you are in. Nobody knows about them. They're not on TV. They're not on the news. But those people are in the industry. They're, they know their names. And those people make a decent, not a decent, they make a really good income. Actually, Joanna Pan, she was able not only quit her day job, but to have her husband quit his day job and help her with her creative company because she was so successful. And you see, it's really, really possible. There is such a thing, but it's not, you don't, won't see it in the media. You won't see it anywhere because it's not taught, because our educational system is still stuck in this um, classical, you go to school, you go to college, you get a profession. Everybody has afra is afraid to become a freelancer or a creative entrepreneur, but it's if you do try it, it's a really, really viable and good career path. And not only that, it gives you a fulfilling life because you get to do what you love and what makes you, what what helps you come alive. So, um, I just want to say a couple of more examples. Nicole from Health Nut Nutrition, if anyone knows her, she has like built a great company in Canada and she she's such a great YouTuber and I really like her. And there are even more of those. I could go on and on and on. And those people, they're really authentic. They love what they're doing. They're really creative, but they're also absolutely business minded. They're business minded creatives. So now let's talk about one thing. It's part of the steps that we will take about how to become a professional creative, which is what do you think about money? If you can just throw me uh, a message about that, uh, write a comment about what is your take on money? What do you think about money? As I go on, feel free to comment right there. And um, I have actually, the pivot point of my thinking about creativity and business is, was my interview with Joanna Penn, where we talked about the creativity, how to balance creativity and business. And she asked me that question. She asked it, she asked it into the audience, but it was actually for me. And she was like, okay, what do you think about money? And I was caught off guard. I was like, okay, what do I think about money? How important is money for me? And I understood that, okay, it's it's fine to have this, but it's not that important, you know. Um, if I had any, would be good, but I don't really want to deal with money. I don't really want to... I'm actually afraid to uh, be paid for what I do because I feel like an imposter. I feel like I'm not... Like I said, I'm not Stephen King. I'm not J.K. Rowling. I'm not... I'm not George R. R. Martin or any other great writer. Why should anybody pay for what I create? And so I, it kind of feels like I'm a charity case. I'm glad if people pay me money, but I don't deserve it. And I feel like many creatives feel this way, right? Many, many creatives feel this way. Like a charity case, like you don't deserve it, like... Uh, yeah, the, you, you're wearing the starving, your starving artist life as a badge of honor, basically. Because you think, okay, artists are supposed to starve. If they're not realize, if they're not um, recognized in their lifetime, it's a good thing. Um, I just re 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 read from Taylor Smallwood, money is always first in my mind as well. Okay, <laughs> it's great that you figured out how to message. <laughs> really good. Yeah, I, we, we are going along and figuring out things as we go, right? All of us together. So, um, yeah. Um, do you feel like an imposter? You should be fr proud of what you create. You really should. And there are people where your creativity will resonate with them because everyone is an individual and you have something to give to this world as content as there will be more and more content, we have to be more and more realistic. Um, uh, we have to be more and more, not realistic, sorry, I, mean, I meant real and authentic and um, approachable to people and share 
what makes us unique, but on the other hand, serve people as well. Be proud of what you create and don't be afraid to charge because, you know, uh, I'm a freelance filmmaker as well because I studied it and I absolutely love it. And do you know how many times in our industry I was, uh, I was just asked to work for credits, basically for free, invest my time and just work for credits. And what an industry does that? No industry does that except for creatives. No lawyer would work for credits. No plumber would work for credits. But we do this because we are so afraid to charge for our creativity. But it's your property asset, your creativity, and it's valuable when it serves the right audience. So let me read what Shuba just wrote. Money help us to get get whatever resources we want to lead a happy and comfortable life. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. It's absolutely right. If we want to have a happy and comfortable life, I know money that doesn't give us happiness, right? And we all know that. But we have to have a certain amount of money to get along because when you, like me, dread looking at your bank account, you're so miserable. You're really miserable. If you're scraping money for groceries, creativity is the last thing on your mind. So it's so important to connect the two of them in order to be a happy and healthy, not burning out creative. So here we go. So this is... What makes a professional creative, we get, I think we are, we're all clear on that, hard work and the ability to make, so hard work on your craft and the ability to make business decisions. So how do we get there? And this is where we talk about these th three steps of a professional creative. Sinja says, money is a journey. I'm getting better at it slowly. Ah, oh, thank you. Me too, Sinja, me too. Absolutely. It's a journey. When Joanna asked me that in that interview, I was like, yes, yes, it's a journey. And she was like, okay, you have to practice saying, I love money. I like money. Practice it with me as you listen. Say this out loud. Don't be afraid of that. And I'm not talking about some voodoo thing or, you know, uh, energy or something like that. It's just, it's your mindset. If, if you thinking about it like that, you're holding yourself back because you're holding yourself back from success because subconsciously you will block yourself from being a creative, creative who also thrives money-wise. So, you ready for those three steps? Number one, and I already said that actually is drum roll mindset. You have to change your mind about creativity and business. You have to have the right foundation. Mindset is the right foundation and you have to establish this right foundation about money and creativity. Don't be afraid of money, but also thrive in your creativity. Put a lot of time into your creative craft, whatever you're doing. I don't know, Maybe you could write and let me know who are the people watching right now. Are you writers? Are you YouTubers, filmmakers, podcasters? So that I know what my audience is. But um, I think every one of us has to practice their creativity, practice the craft, getting better and better at it. Because we know that when we're starting out in a job, when we're like in the entry level, we are not worth much worth in terms of we're not getting paid a lot but as we become better as we learn the craft we gain worth and we are like raised in status it's every job works this way and creativity works when we look at it professionally like that as well but you also have to tackle your ah, I see Sinja I write I think there are a lot of writers in here I'm a writer too so <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm so glad to have writers in my audience, but everybody else as well, because as you can see, I'm also a filmmaker and a podcaster and everything else. So yeah, you have to tackle your business mindset as well. Absolutely, absolutely. You have to tackle your business mindset because like I said, don't feel like the starving artist. Don't feel like you're... Um, yeah, like you can't charge for what you create. Be proud to charge of your creations. Be proud to, first of all, create great products that have a solution for your audience. And entertainment, 
can be a solution as well, by the way. We also have this huge industry that we're talking about this infotainment. So you have information and entertainment at the same time. Think about your attitude towards business and creativity. Be honest with yourself and set the right foundation in terms of mindset. Um, yeah, let me give you one example that I also talk about in the book and in the course, which is the salesman paradigm. The salesman paradigm is this sleazy door-to-door -door salesman where we go, where he goes around from door to door and knocks on every door and, um, yeah, wants to sell people something that is a scam and that they don't need, basically, with beautiful words. But this is not who we are. And I feel like when we think about business and marketing, we feel like this door-to-door -door salesman because this is how marketing was done for a very, very long time. Or, you know, these calls, just calling people up randomly and trying to sell them something. But this is not who we are. We are not the dirty door-to-door -door salesman. We find an audience that is interested in our products, that is interested. We target our audience very... This is why you're, what you're doing is not for everybody. And what you're writing, your spouse might not like your books or your mom or your friends. And this is okay because they're not your target audience. Find your tribe, find your target audience and don't be afraid to sell to them because this is a product that you created with integrity and it's worth something. Um... Yeah, so if you don't have this foundation, it will always block your success. You have to work on the foundation first and tackle your mindset with different techniques, uh, things that you tell yourself, things that you write on the wall, and so on. Um, and we need to adapt truth about how creativity and business are lived practically in our everyday life. This is so important. Yes, mindset but also how we do it practically, what we do with it every single day. Um, yeah, I see another aspiring writer, screenwriter, so good. Screenwriters I love as well. I've written some scripts for my books, so welcome. <laughs> um, ah, thank you so much. I'm so glad that I'm helpful for you. Thank you for joining me. And uh, let's go to step number two. So we work on mindset, what now? Number two is planning. The planning stage is so important, we, but we need to have the right planning strategies. We have to have the right planning strategies because we can plan for a lot of things, but we won't be successful if we don't do it right. Uh, and we have to plan both our creativity and our business. So what are the right planning techniques, you will ask? Um, one of those, for example, is the creative business plan. Uh, the creative business plan, and I know when I hear the word business plan, it's like, oh, I just, <laughs> I hate, I really hate it. Uh, I, when I looked up templates for business plans online, they were so boring. This is why I wrote my own version of the business plan in the Business Minded Creative that is exciting and good for creatives. And there are still things when you think about numbers and money where you just cringe as a creative, but you have to go through that when you realize the big picture goal, what you're really after and why this is so helpful. Your business plan, your yearly plan, your daily plans and routines are so important. Really, you could change your routine for 15 minutes a day and this will have will already have a great impact because we all know that our lives are lived day by day we will talk about this later but you have to plan the right way you have to plan your business you have to plan your creativity how much do you want to produce when how do you want to produce this what do you want to do week by week day by day and you have to have the right planning techniques and number three and this is what i mentioned already um, and also I would, uh, would want to add that, uh, we also have to plan our learning process, basically, as we learn about business, as we learn about marketing and we'll learn about our craft as well. We have to plan it in as well to get better as business minded creatives. Uh, and number three is practice. Practice is so important. What we do daily really matters. Small habits can really build or destroy our lives. Small habits like smoking or drinking or 
whatever that is destructive to you, even like the, the, uh, yeah, snacking, um, the bad stuff, sugar. It's not that bad if you do it once, you know, if you have a burger, you won't get fat from one burger as well as you won't get, get thin from one salad. It's the small daily habits that you accumulate. If you eat a burger daily, watch out, you know, <laughs> but if you exercise daily, even if it's just 15 minutes a day, it makes a huge impact. This is where our daily habits are so important. And it's the same people. It's the same with creativity as well. I feel like we, yes, if we try to, um, if we try to cram, cram too much into our day as creatives, if you have a day job and then you try to write for two or three hours a day, you will definitely burn out and you will just throw the towel because it's just too much and you don't want that. What you want instead is a daily sustainable habit that you can do for the next year or two, right? And you can and start small. Please start small. Start with a 15 minutes creative habit. Start with 30 minutes maybe. Uh, for example, I have a child and also I have a job and don't have a day job, but I'm a freelance creative and I'm working daily on my creativity and my writing. And somewhere in there, running my house, doing household chores, child and so on. I'm also a honorary local theater director and so on. I'm like, uh, when do I, when will I exercise? And what I adapted during the last couple of months, uh, I've been regu exercising regularly for a long time, but it was really stressful for me because I just had to push it somewhere into the day and it didn't fit. I decided I will get up, er get up earlier, 30 minutes, only 30 minutes earlier and do it every day. And guys, it was it was really life changing. Really, those thirty minutes of undisrupted workout—thirty minutes only. It's not an hour. It's not two. It did so much for my mental and physical health. And I'm not saying you should. I'm I am saying you should probably exercise. But I'm talking about creativity here. So if you have a full day filled with, and you probably have, with work, with chores, with kids, um, yeah, you should still start with 15, 20, 30 minutes a day of your creativity. And if I have writers here, screenwriters, writers, absolutely start writing for a short amount of time, but write every single day. And there are actually tips and tricks that I share in my book and uh, also even deeper in my video course of how to use those 15, 20, 30 minutes in the most efficient way and how to establish a creative habit because yeah, we all have these, there are books on habit building which are great like Atomic Habits by uh, James Clear. I, I love this book. But with creativity, it's a little bit different, you know, because it's not just some habit. It also has to be a habit that sparks your creativity and that wakes the inner child in you and you, it, you can't get too comfortable with that because it will drench your creativity so you have to tweak and change things at least a little with creativity and all of this I talk about in the book and the course mm, and yet uh, I want to say that that if you have only 15 minutes a day and you do it right uh, if you have this technique that I share where you can write, I think it was like 1,000 words, 800 words in 15 minutes, you can write an entire novel in four months. Yes, with 15 minutes daily. This is the way daily habits work. It's just incredible. And you have to establish also a business, a daily business practice. You have to know how to do it effectively, what's the business cycle of things, but a daily business practice, looking daily at your marketing efforts, at what's working, how you do business, uh, looking uh, maybe not daily on your, at your numbers, and um, I would say daily is a marketing thing mostly, so you have to do book marketing, you have to look at your marketing efforts daily, and maybe four times a year, look at what you've earned and look at the money and the numbers, but this is also really, really important. Uh, so you have to establish both a creative and a daily habit. So it starts in your mind, you plan out, and then you go into the daily habits. Um, let me see if I forgot anything. So yeah, you have to know how to wire your, your brain for maximum creative impact. 
and stay playful on the one hand and to take risks because a creative always takes takes risks. You don't want to be Hollywood who just de- does remakes and uh, parts two and three and four of the same old, <laughs> uh, the same old film that we have seen all again and again and again. And on the other hand, how to be business oriented and how to make business decisions and how to t- talk about writing and be really about growing your company whatever your dream is of being a solopreneur or maybe have a big company and employees and so on. So you have to learn how to balance those two in everyday life because this is how life is lived. You plan out and then you balance it in everyday life. So three steps, change your mindset, plan effectively and establish sustainable daily creative practices. So I will open up the round for any questions, if you have any, on how to become a professional creative and everything else we've talked about. I'll be waiting for the questions and looking at the course curriculum because this is what I actually really wanted to talk to you about in a minute if you just want to, if you want to do that. <laughs> um, yes. So... Let me know if there are any questions. I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you about the curriculum while the questions come in and answer them as I go. So first of all, the course, uh, here's the book, by the way, I really want to show you guys. It's also available in print and it's available, uh, I think it's it's quite cheap. I think it's two or three ninety nine dollars as ebook or as a print version. I love that cover, thanks to my cover artist, David. Um, and I have also great um, graphics in there and everything that is helpful and you will see like we talk about stuff like the marketing funnel i hope you guys can see it in here the marketing funnel and everything else that's there so the book is really good but the video course um ah here i see the first question and let's talk about the video course later because i really want to talk Sinha says, my biggest challenge is not writing even if I want to. Yes, I get it. You really want to, but you're just not disciplined enough. You have to hack your brain. You have to give yourself, first of all, you have to give yourself a set time. Um, This is actually what I talk about in the book, and I will will just talk to you about that for a minute. Um, you see that when we talk about the daily creative practice, we talk about the daily habit, and um, you have to give yourself a habit. A habit is an action that is repeated enough times to become automatic. So you have to have something that is automatic and that pushes you. And um, you have to leave the decision process out of the equation. So write your write down an intention implementation an intentional implementation is i will write at that time like let's say monday 15 p.m or every day 15 p.m oh, 15 p.m 3 p.m 15 is mixing european and u.s times and um at my desk the place and the time write it down be very strict about it look at what what fits into your daily life and then give yourself a trigger to trick yourself a little bit and the trigger can be everything maybe you connect it the best way to do this is connect it with a habit that you have in place already for example let's say uh, I have my kid I put her down to for a nap uh, at 1 p.m and then I have my coffee I always do that once she's asleep I get my afternoon coffee And this could be a trigger for writing. So I say, okay, I have this habit in place. I have my afternoon coffee. And as I do that, I will link to it my writing habit. So maybe you look at your life and think about what habits you already have in place 
that you could also spare like half an hour after that or maybe get up earlier and uh, if you have like a morning habit to get your coffee get up 30 minutes earlier and have your coffee and after that instantly or during while you're drinking your coffee start writing and do it for a week or two really push yourself and then see if it works because your brain will start linking your habit that is already there to the habit, the new habit that you're trying to establish. There might be also another problem that you just don't know what to write or how to, once you sit down to start writing, you don't know what to do because you're staring at the blank page. And there's also a solution for that. You have to have a plan. When you sit down, you have to know what you're about to do. And there are many more in my book, and I hope this was helpful. If it wasn't, you can ask another question. Feel free and I will do my best to answer it. Uh, any more questions? Uh, did you have a key phrase in changing your mindset? Like a mantra. I really love what Joanna Penn does. I, she's my online mentor and I love her. This way I keep talking about her. <laughs> and she has on her wall, uh, create a body of work I'm proud of. And I love that because it's it says two things. For once it says um, you have to have a body of work. So it's not only one thing you create. We're so, so many times we're just so fixated on this one book that we want to write or this one screenplay. And we should be fixating on our body of work. The huge big thing because your first book will not be your last. You, I, I think I said that somewhere. How many books has Stephen King written? Around 40 or 60? And I think, uh, no, it was something about 60, 67. And John Grisham has written 43, I think. It's so, it's so huge. So have a body of work in mind. Not just this one thing, but a body of work. And then that you're proud of. That you're proud to present to the world. That you're proud to share with the world. And that you're proud to charge for. And I think you wrote something more. Following the link to the invitation. Oh, so good. Thank you for following the link. Thank you for staying with me for so long. Thank you. I am so... I really hope that it is helpful what I'm doing here. Really. I hope there will be more questions coming in. Uh, as I will continue to talk about the course for a minute because I feel like I, I'm a prof I'm a really 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 I love films and I put so much work into this because I was like okay if I'm doing a video course it has to be good it can't be like, like just a presentation that I chat about and you know like all the other courses which are great as well and I love them but we just talked about infotainment and I was like okay it has to be entertainment as well and it has to have a soul and it has to have cinematic quality quality so I went for like something I won't say Hollywood like but it was a lot of work actually and I put a lot of work into it it's just, not just like talking heads what we're doing now or a presentation that I talked about there are like I think two or three videos where I do that because it's a lot and there's a lot of information but most of them have really they're really inspiring and entertaining and emotional and this is what I went for I wanted to touch artists on an emotional level and this is why I created a video course that is really different that inspires you and motivates you and pushes you to new limits and to a new adventure and this was really something that I wanted to do um Oh, I love that. I hope, I'm really glad that the trigger helped you, Sinja, really. Um, yeah, and I built four modules uh, for this course. So one is number one, build your foundation. Of course, it's the mindset thing, but I created like a big video about it. Four misconceptions, the creative script tonight, it's called four misconce misconceptions that will kill you in the long term. Um, like a therapy session for the creative brain and it's really it's a it's quite a long video and took a lot of work but it's really inspiring and emotional and I ha think helps you tackle mindsets and stays with you because it's a story and it's emotion it's not just facts think that 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 but really inspiring you to go another way and then the creative sweet spot how to practically discover your calling we talk a lot about calling about how to focus your creativity how to find something that you love and focus down on that because this was something that helped me 
I'm a creative who's scattered a lot. I love doing things. If you follow my Insta, you will see I love photography as well, film, writing, all of this. And I really had to narrow down and focus. And this helped me a lot. And I share this with you in a very inspiring manner as well. Oh, great, Taylor. Yeah, this is absolutely powerful. I'm glad that it helped you. It helps me. It helped me as well as I heard Jonah Penn talking about this in her podcast. Uh, and yeah, module number two is build your creativity in the course. And build your creativity is how to, we will talk about the practical and sustainable habit plan for the creativity. Answer three questions that will ensure you see the habit through. It's for everybody who's, who just can't see the habit through. We'll talk about three questions that will help you do that. And I will actually, number two is let create, let's create a habit together. I will document my journey into sustainable creativity, how I did that. And you will get to see me early in the morning without makeup, how I struggle to establish this creative habit. And a very important video that you can watch and rewatch and rewatch re again pushes four ways to push your creativity if you're in a rut. So, and we always get stuck. I'm telling you, I have a creative habit for years now, but um, yeah, I get stuck all the time, all the time. So if you get stuck, you will have to rewatch this video again and again. We talk about how to tackle lack of discipline, how to tackle lack of, lack of motivation, how to tackle lack of inspiration and so on. Four things to tackle the problem that you have right now and how to get out of it. And number three is the module build your business. So we've built the foundation, creativity, how to discover your vision in four easy steps, your business vision, how to create a marketing, create marketing strategy. Those are the courses that are the modules that are really long and that we talk really in depth about those things. How to write a bulletproof yearly plan. I discovered a way to plan my year that is so amazing. I actually talk about that in my YouTube videos, but I will go into that in more detail, of course, in the course. And how to incorporate business into daily life, because this is the only two way to run a creative, successful business. And uh, um, number four, and this is so important, how to build a future-proof creative practice. Uh, we'll talk about evergreen strategies, so strategies that never get old to build a creative business and yeah, it's also really, really close to my heart to look into the future. I'm a dystopian author, like uh, I write also dystopian sci-fi books under the pen name of D.F. Wink. Uh, yes, and as a dystopian author, I always look into the future and um, yeah, the future can be scary for creatives because there are so much things, there are so much things out there. AI that writes text and creates music and so on and how we can tackle all those things because the internet will be flooded with content but we can stand out and we can make money if we do it the right way and we will talk about these things and then finally my last video which is really important for me as I said an outlook into the creative future and how you can prepare for that so uh, this is the course and for today, uh, I think until Monday, you can get it for the launch. Uh, launch, because I'm launching it, I have a launch discount. Sorry, I'm getting tired right here of talking. 50% um, discount. So I never do discounts uh, except when I launch courses. And 50% discount on the course. It actually starts from $25 a day, uh, a, day a month. You can get it for $25 a month for six months and then you have lifetime access to the course and all the bonus content that is coming and I'm definitely going to be adding bonus content to all of my courses over the next years as I learn and as I go and you will get lifetime access to all of those. So if you if you fancy, you can get the course but you can also get head over to Amazon and get the book, The Business Minded Creative, just search it on Amazon or any other store. I'm actually publishing wide as some people maybe know from my interviews um, and uh, it's everywhere on all the stores you can get books um, and the business mind creative look for storymasterclass.com and you can find it there storymasterclass.com and you can there are the links to all of my courses so any more questions if not I think I will be ending the live stream and I'm so, so really, really thankful 
for everything that you like for all of my readers everybody who joined me or will be listening in the future ah uh, really guys you make my day i'm so helpful that, i'm so thankful that i can help you i'm so thankful that you went into this live stream and i hope i hope that i helped you with it ah, I, i see another question where can i find the link to the course give me just a second I think I just said that, but let's, let me make sure that it's on there. I will send the link in the comments so you can get it instantly. Let me see. Uh, here we go. It's the link and I will link to it on my course page as well. And I'm also sending out the link via my email. If you're not part of my uh, email subscribers, you absolutely should because it's a jam, I hope. <laughs> I think I'm sharing all of my knowledge, entertaining stories and everything else. I'm not just asking you to buy my book and courses. It's actually just because I'm launching it right now. But most of the time, I'm just sharing free content that is hopefully helpful. So if you're still haven't subscribed you absolutely should storyartist.me you can find the link there and get my free ebook and video course as well over there so any more questions if so let me know yeah i think i said everything else All right, doesn't seem to be that case. If you have any questions about the course or the book as well, feel free to ask them or anything else that you have on your mind. I really, really wanna share my knowledge, guys. Just waiting in if any questions will come. Oh, let me see. I think I had the wrong link on Story Masterclass. So, yeah, I just changed that. So if you go ahead and to storymasterclass.com, oh, thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you. Yes, I I need to love what I'm doing. I absolutely need to love that because as I said, when I was in my day job, I I only managed to do it for three months and then I was depressed because I didn't care about everything. Um, yeah, thank you, Sinja. I really, I really love that you find it interesting and thank you for everybody else who watched and will be watching. And I just want to say, I changed the link. So if you go to storymasterclass.com, you will also find a link to the course and my other course for writers. Subscribe to my email list as always, as ever, because it, it's, it's, I, I think it's the best way to communicate and get free content as well. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Tyler. <laughs> thank you for the shout out. Okay, guys, I'm, I just want to say thank you. Thank you again. And keep writing me emails. I love to get emails from readers. If you have any questions, just email me, storyartist, uh, Di Diana Wink at storyartist.me. I love to communicate. It was so much fun, actually. Uh, I think I'm going to do a live stream soon again because I love chatting with you guys. So thank you so much. I love hearing from you and what you're struggling with as well so that I can tweak my content to meet your needs. Thank you so much. And I see you.